Welcome back to the Box Score Geek Show. It's after Christmas. Patrick's back from Vegas, so we've got a ton of stuff to talk about. We've actually scheduled this uh, a long time ago, but Vivek, between uh, just scheduling conflicts, the holidays, etc., uh, you haven't been able to come on. Luckily, your nets didn't really improve in that time, nor did the East. So the topic we wanted to talk to you about, you are a resident Nets fan, the resident optimist, was hoping they could actually win the East or at least come close behind Miami. And uh, the season has not turned out that way. So we wanted to start this uh, podcast talking the Nets, the East. And uh, since you're the guest, uh, we'll, we'll let you chime in whatever you want to say there. Uh, yeah, no, with the optimism and all that, I, this team is done. I don't think that they can really do anything past this point. Like, everything that went wrong went wrong. Like, I, I, the thing is, the, the team was really built, I think, first of all, it was really built around Andre Karolenko playing like a solid 25 to 30 minutes a game as like the one of the best players on the team. And he's played four games this season. Uh, Brooke Lopez improved, and that was like a bright spot on the team, and now he's out for the season. And like, I don't know, there's just, Nothing that like could have gone well has gone well for the most part. Well, yeah. and it's also the the gamble of of superstars at the the twilight of their career, where you're hoping for the one last season. So, for instance, Miami was really hoping for that with Shaq, and they managed to get him right before he you know fell off a cliff. You kind of hope for this, and they were really hoping that was going to happen with KG. And you you said it's done. I would say KG, one of the greatest players of all time, one of the greatest Minnesotans of all time. He's done. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I mean, there's. I mean, it wasn't even necessarily all on KG and Paul Pierce, but like, definitely, I think having Andre Karolinko for only four games has really hurt the Nets. And then you know, Darren Williams has hasn't been that great this season. He's been hurt. Almost everybody has been hurt, with the exception of like Joe Johnson and like all of the backups. So I mean, no, I guess Mason Plumlee's a solid spot. He was, he was a good bright spot on the team, but like. I don't know. I don't think the Nets. I think they'll struggle to make the playoffs. I mean, I think it was clear from the beginning that this was a team that you know they were just going to roll the dice on a bunch of these stars, and I think there was the assumption: okay, we've got so many of these guys, we can maybe manage some minutes, and we can get more out of these older players than otherwise. You know, maybe we can coast through the season on forty-five to fifty wins, and then have a tighter rotation where the big players play more minutes in the playoffs, and. Uh, that was, I think that was always kind of a big gamble because the Nets didn't have the ability to just say, okay, we're going we're gonna to go out and we're going to buy LeBron and Dwight. They didn't have that. They, they didn't have that ability. So the, the only way for them to spend money to get wins was to kind of take a gamble like this. Yeah. And I, think, yeah, I mean, they tried to get Dwight. They tried to get LeBron, and it didn't work either way. So now you're stuck with, yeah. you know, I mean, ultimately what it showed and what, what the Knicks and the Nets kind of show in a way is that, like, uh, I don't know, going after like perceived stars and just spending a lot of money isn't going to win you, you know, the, in the NBA, especially because of, you know, guaranteed contracts and the salary cap, etc. It could have. I mean, it could have worked out. I mean, they, like, they could have avoided some injury luck and Deron Williams could have returned to form and things. I mean, if you look at it, if, if Deron Williams had returned to form and Karolinko hadn't gotten injured so much uh, with the improvement of Brook Lopez, this could have been a really good team right now. But, I mean, it... I think everybody knew it was a gamble from the get-go. And, and frankly, the players that the Nets gave up to get Pierce and Garnett uh, wasn't the big deal. It was the draft picks they gave up. Right, right. So, I mean, this team is going to be bad uh, for the next couple of years. I, 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 don't, I don't actually agree. This is – so they're like two major new owners. Uh, the other one, I'm not sure. I keep hearing his name said as Vivek. And I know we've Vivek, talked yeah, about that. Vivek. but. I, I say Vivek, so I, I, he's going to be at Sloan. I'm going to try and approach him okay. and see if he knows me because I've trashed him a few times in the blog. <laughs> but, I'm sure the billionaire is paying attention to what you say on our blog. <laughs> Mark, yeah, well, Mark Cuban started retweeting me and stuff. Like it, it's the weirdest, you know, the weird things ever. You're like, why would a billionaire ever follow the blog? And then you're like, but that's happened before. It's not as out of the realm of possibility as we think. Yeah. But no, um, his. You watch him out in Sacramento, and you kind of go. Your plan is bad. Your team is bad, but your plan was bad. You had no hope. Like this plan had no hope of success. Resigning Demarcus Cousins and then, you know, trading away one of your few good players. It's not a surprise your team sucks. Whereas you look at the Nets and you go, okay, this is really risky. I don't think this is going to succeed. But if money's not an option to you, then go for it because, like you mentioned, you're not getting LeBron. You're not getting Dwight. 
if if money's not an option to you and you you want to try and win every season, which is a strategy I am fully behind. I really hate tank talk, especially five, ten games into the season. So the Nets, I don't think their plan was great, but I don't think they had many alternatives. And I think going forward, like this team was already starting to sell out versus the Knicks. Basically, this team, I think, stands well poised to be the team in New York. And the advantage of being the team in New York is money is no option to you. Yeah. Well, you're definitely the- right with that. But the issue is the cap space, number one. The Nets aren't going to have cap space for a well, solid that, amount of time. It's not going to matter. I mean, it didn't matter this year. Their salary is like, what, $104 million and the cap is Right. 50, so, so you either need cap space or you need assets. And currently the Nets have zero. Like, they can't make a big trade with really anybody on the team right now. Because, you, you first of all, like, you have to have expiring contracts to make a big deal. And you have to have draft picks. The Nets well, don't have draft picks. Have- they have Pierce's expiring. Right, that's it. That's the only uh, asset on the team. They have Kirilenko at three million, which is actually a pretty damn good asset. What it's team good. wouldn't mind having him for three million? It's definitely uh, good, but I mean, I don't think that like. But I mean, who? I guess. I mean, if you trade Pierce, have, Kirilenko, and Lopez, I mean, even if, even if he's out for the year, is he out for the year? I don't know, but he is, yeah, he's he out is. for the year. But he's perceived. I don't think he is. He's a very good player, or he's become a good player. But he's perceived as a franchise center, uh, which can get you a lot of stuff, right? But he's perce- the Nets perceive him as a franchise center as well. well. I think a lot of teams in the league do. So I mean, you could you you could pull something like uh, the Bucks did with Bogut. Uh, was that last year? Where you know, okay, he's out for the year, but some other team's going to take a chance that he'll be back, and so you could get rid of him for maybe uh, a draft pick and an expiring contract or something like that. I mean, there there are things you could do. For the right, next, right. Uh, That's true. I agree that, but the real reason they're in a bad space uh, is because they have no draft picks for like the next three years. And here's the thing: it's very poor, likely, if oh, not Portland very likely. Anything, you can buy draft picks. Like that's yeah, the that's point. true. And you don't know what that, that's my point is that rather that it's it's like saying, well, I can buy uh, I can buy you know apples or whatever, but it's better to have apples so you don't have to buy them so that you can buy something else. Right, okay, but I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, just saying, I'm just saying that right now, if they're looking at if, if, to look at reloading, they're in a bad spot. They're in a bad yeah, spot. I don't, I don't want draft picks for the Nets just because, like, I don't, I don't think that they're going to take you know a good player with their draft pick. I have lots of confidence in the Nets' ability to draft players. But yeah, the thing is, draft picks can become good players in other ways. Right, exactly. The, the Nets can make big deals because they can take on big salaries, uh, and you know, Mikhail Prokhorov doesn't really care about the luxury tax at all. But mm-hmm. you know, that's what they they need those kinds of assets so that when the next superstar demands his way out of wherever he's playing, so whether that maybe Kevin Love, then you know, you could you could build this super package and send it to a team and then acquire this star. That's the thing. That's how the Nets have to to plan this out. Unfortunately, the way they've done that, the, the stars that they've gotten haven't really panned out or never really were big stars to begin with. Yeah. No, so, I, I, I mean, I, th- I thought it was a gamble, uh, but I, it's weird. Just It's really hard because owners and teams are so inconsistent year to year. Uh, it's you, you think a, you think like Joe Dumars. Joe Dumars looks like a genius in Detroit from like 2000 to 2003. And then you get to watch him for five more seasons and you go – Oh my God! You had no idea what you were like. Were you just throwing darts at a board? Like you, it seemed like you were smart, but I have no idea that you have any idea what you're doing. The Nets look like they at least, if they you know tweak it a little, if they call out to the box score geeks and ask for one of our many great consultants, I think they could very easily turn this team into something great. And I have more faith in them going forward because it's like, well, your plan wasn't fantastic, but it had a shot. Whereas many teams, you know. You watch the Knicks. We're going to talk more of the East, too. So the Knicks, uh, one of Patrick's yeah. picks, we'll talk later about this. The Knicks, oh, I love the Knicks, where they go after Bargnani. And then as Patrick put up, I, I think, in a tweet or uh, your post today, you're like, when your coach is complaining about rebounding, but you're putting out one of the worst rebounders as your center, yeah. what do you expect? Well, I mean, the, yeah, the, I knew that, that Woodson was not a good coach. In, like, it was like the fifth or the sixth game of the season, and Woodson said he was going to – start Bargnani a lot, especially against teams that have big lineups because he wanted to counter with a big lineup of his own. And I was like, you are doing it wrong. Because <laughs> he might be the tall, Nets. but he doesn't play tall. <laughs> the Nets may just get the four seed anyway, and then I guess maybe we could see what happens. You know, when we're discussing how bad the East is, like the Nets could feasibly win the Atlantic Division, I think. 
they could win the Atlantic. And in fact, I think in Vegas, they still have the best odds to win the Atlantic. Yeah, Karolinko's coming uh, back soon, supposedly. And, and, so and honestly, like... That could be enough. Even if, even if they don't, they could make the playoffs like as an eight seed with like thirty-seven wins. Yeah, and then so, all of a sudden, Karolinko's healthy and Pierce is doing good, and Duran feels good, and they could like win a couple series, right? Yeah, the Nets. I, I'm, yeah, I still I'm sticking I mean, with the Nets as the four seed in the East, but I mean it's a very if, different four if, seed. If they, if they, so, so by the way, um, I know we wanted to talk more of the East, but I know we talked a lot the Nets and and a lot of the East isn't actually that interesting. So I'll let uh, Patrick have the final no note on the East, and then we're actually going to talk about all-star voting, which the East also makes look just as bad. Can I segue right into that then? Oh, go for Can it. We, you, don't, you don't have to say I, one I word mean, about the East. Why don't, why, don't we, why don't we just say that the all-star team should be like, you know, basically the Heat and the Pacers will munch their top-minute players together, and that's, all, that's the East all-star team. Because... I mean, <laughs> it's really hard to find other all-star worthy players, but I, actually I will say I think Jordan Crawford deserves some, uh, some thought in that respect. But um, I mean, the, the East this year has been kind of a weird conference to cover. And now with Al Horford gone, it's going to be hard to find all-stars there. I think Paul Millsap deserves some, uh, some well, thought. Well, actually, I actually am not that mad at Carmelo Anthony being an all-star this year. So I, so here's my thing. Like, it's obvious the fans are going to vote for the top scorers and the, the names that they see most on TV. Um, although I've never quite understood why Carmelo Anthony is so popular and so well-known, because if you compare him to guys like LeBron James and Kevin Durant, etc., he's not on TV all the time, right? He's not, like, doing Gatorade commercials and, and sneaker commercials and that, the way, the way LeBron and Kevin Durant are. Um, has, has he slowed down on that? Back in the day when I was... Uh... When I used to watch a, a lot more games, when I like had altitude and watched it all the time, when he started his career, he was you know made sure he was on several video game covers. He he was really good on that. He did lots of marketing. I cannot actually remember the last commercial I saw featuring Carmelo Anthony. Whereas, and and and, and I don't I don't watch Knicks games, but I don't watch Thunder games either, really. And I see Kevin Durant commercials like constantly, right? And 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 LeBron James commercials, obviously, also constantly, right? I just, I, I mean, I don't think he's got the sort of glow. Well, I mean, okay, Melo is third in, in all-star voting for amongst forwards. And he is, he's also behind Kevin Durant. He's behind Kevin Durant, yeah. he's behind LeBron, I mean, and he's behind Paul George. I think, I think it's obvious that he's going to be behind LeBron, Le, Le, LeBron and Durant. But I like I Paul George LeBron. as well. That is an awesome, I have to find some way to put that together. That, that's a good nickname. But yeah, he is behind Paul George as well. So he probably will not get the start. <laughs> no, no, there's three starters in the front court. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't have the center. So it's, it, the starters in the front court are going to be, which is kind of weird, are going to be yeah. LeBron, Paul George, and, and Mello. Yeah. Mello. Uh, I can, act, I can see I'm that, sure, actually. I can. I'm sure. By the way, all the Pacers fans that are about to get pissed off at us right now, we agree. Hibbert should probably be there in front of Anthony. No question. But, I mean, and so should Joachim Noah, for that, for that matter. The whole, I hate the whole front court guard thing because it basically screws all the centers. It totally screws the centers. Yeah, the uh, centers I think that's a new been, rule, been, right? The yeah, centers have been left. screwed for a while because it used to be basically with uh, Yao and Shaq. Like in the West, if you were a top center, I was a big Marcus Camby fan, and that drove me nuts. Let's actually talk about um, players in the West being screwed out of all-star votes. Patrick, I'm impressed because I, I take a little pride because I, I of the box score geeks, I'm the top person in terms of Twitter followers, but it looks like I'm not sure. Have you had a tweet that's ever been more popular than this one? You had one that's in the 80s now for retweets about one of the biggest all-star snubs I, out I posted, west. I, I posted a tweet that it feels to me like I'm stating the most obvious of obvious things, right? Uh, Kevin, Gra Kevin Love is going to score. He's going to basically post the first you know, 25-12-4 season since Barkley. He's going to post the first 25-13-4 uh, season since Wilt. Uh, <laughs> And he's not being voted into the All Star game, so I mean, I mean, I get it. I get it that people are all about you know winning teams, etc. But I'm sorry, this isn't worth third place in the West. It's not worth third place when you're having a season where all all of the comp seasons are Hall of Famers: Wilt, Kareem, Elgin Baylor, Billy Cunningham, 
those are your comps and you're not an all-star you're not worthy of being voted in you're oh, no, second wait. in scoring in the nba or he was maybe he's third now and you're not worthy of being voted in what exactly has blake griffin done to be considered that much better than kevin love right now and and i mean i get okay well, you, you know what Dwight Howard is and whatever, but <laughs> come on, people. Seriously. That's embarrassing. He, he plays next to Chris Paul in Los Angeles. That's that's a sure. good. Yeah, great. But, <laughs> I mean, I, so when I was when I was well, a Blake, kid, we, when I, I mean, went you to get why Blake Griffin's a popular player. I mean, the the dunk contests and all those kinds of things have put him way more into the That you know, dunk spot. that he won with was – be at like that dunk. Have, have any of you ever seen this? Uh, it's a terrible movie. I, I happen to own it though. It's called The Wizard. It was. I don't, uh, I don't think I've seen that. It was it, good. It was made in the 1980s. It was a movie about kids going cross country to play in a Nintendo contest. Really, what it was was Nintendo buys a movie. They there there was a time when like there was a a market around selling like video game services for you young and like Vivek. You don't remember this. The Kia dunk that he won on was literally Kia buys a slam dunk contest. Like, there was nothing impressive about that dunk. He's like, I'm going to dunk over a Kia car. Look at this great Kia. That, that, dunk, that dunk contest was fun, but that, the dunk that won it was crap. I'm sorry. I'm calling it. Yeah, but either no, way, I, I mean, that's... I, I get that he's popular, and obviously he's going to be chosen by the coaches, right? But, I mean, to call, I mean, he's having a season that is absolutely historic. Right, he's in several MVP conversations, even though he has no right to be because he's playing on a team that's like 500, right? And and yet he's we're not going to vote him into the All Star game. We're not going to say okay, he's third best in the West. Really, really, guys. I mean, it just it doesn't make any sense to me at all. It's 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 total disgrace as far as as far as voting is go, goes. Because I mean, he's if all you do is look at the leaderboards, he's right there. If that's the beginning and the end of your like evaluation, which doesn't really require a lot of analysis, he's right there. So, by the way, you brought this up, Pat. I believe this was you, but I, I think you had mentioned that you know calling Kevin Love the most naturally gifted athlete, which the the GMs have voted him two years in a row now, which is crap. No, no, no. the opposite, <laughs> the least naturally. Oh, least does the most <laughs> no natural ability. Sorry about that. Yeah. yeah. But you had mentioned like Isaiah Thomas is this, you know, under six foot guard that can't run fast that is somehow, you know, amazing. Is there, I mean, this, this seems obvious, but is there a race element to like Kevin Love not being considered a top player? Although Blake Griffin makes that really weird to have him behind him. Yeah, well, I mean, Blake Griffin's athletic gifts are, you know, ridiculously obvious, right? Uh, I mean, the man could be a track and field star uh, if he weren't a basketball player. But, the, I mean, to call Kevin Love, like, to say that he's not gifted is kind of ridiculous because if you look at players back through history and what, you know, Kevin Love's, like, in terms of physical talent, what his comps would be, you're basically looking at Larry Bird, right? Who, I mean, I don't think many people would argue that Larry Bird wasn't a gifted athlete, regardless of what else you might think of him, right? What but, was weird is that they did the same thing. Like, I still hear Magic Johnson describe Larry Bird as, here's a guy that can't run fast and can't jump high, but he's a good basketball player. And he's like 6'10". So how on earth are you going to say that? You're like, you're like, man, this guy really had an... He couldn't really jump. It's like, well, yeah, he's like almost seven feet tall. <laughs> are you really going to... So the, the, thing that, the thing that Bird and Love both have in common is they both have incredible hands. Uh, I mean, the real reason... Love gets so many rebounds because he has really, really, really strong hands. Uh, he has big hands and he has strong hands. And it, he's just the type of player, if he gets a piece of his hand on the ball, then he's likely to get the ball. Uh, and he's also the type of player that once he gets the ball, uh, you know, in a rebound situation, you don't take it out of his hands. And, and I, I see a lot of players pick up dumb fouls where Love gets a defensive rebound and a player tries to take it away from him, and it's like, every time they get a foul because Love just does not let go of those kinds of balls. The kind of turnovers he makes are from putting the ball on the floor, trying to dribble or, or, or making ill-advised passes. He does not let the ball get pried out of his hand very easily. Uh, and that's exactly the strength that, that, that Bird had. The one thing that, that set Bird apart in terms of natural ability was his unbelievable hands. He had fingertips like glue. 
uh, and and he, he can do a lot of really sweet things with the ball. And I think Love is pretty much the same. And uh, the fact that he's now starting, and, and this is another thing. We look at Love and, and his first five seasons of the year. Every year he's gotten better by adding in another element, right? He came into the league, and we in, that that adhered to wins produced, we all thought Love was great because he was a fantastic rebounder. And we're like, look, he's like the best rebounder since Dennis Rodman, and he's average at offense, so how could he be bad? He's great, right? Even if that's all he ever is. And then next year he comes back, and oh, oh, now he can shoot three-pointers too. Oh, my God, he's really good. And then the next year he comes in, and he's like, oh, and now he's still shooting three-pointers, and he's also upped his usage rate, so he's his team number one scorer and still really good. And, and this year, oh, now he's – a good passer, right? Because he's already got more assists now than he had of the entire season last year, right? So, what I mean, is he going to come back and add another element to his game next year? Like, is he going to yeah, start blocking he's... shots? I mean, it, it's kind of crazy what he's done. And we're, he's 23 years old. I think he's turning 24 this year. I mean, he's got kind of a crazy ceiling. And to say that he does the most with the least gifts is, it's absurd, it's just By the way, I, I, did a, I did a post back in the day, and uh, we're going to be moving to our last segment, so uh, Brian will have no shot of looking this up. I get happy when I throw him for a loop. But uh, I did a, a post back in the day looking at comps between Aldridge, Love, and um, Blake Griffin at the Combine. And Griffin's numbers in terms of just natural stuff that you know they test at the Combine wasn't that far off from Blake Griffin. Blake Griffin just, just looks prettier, frankly. Mm -hmm. um, okay, now on that note, you made – Pretty much my favorite post. I'm throwing it out there. Next year, we have to find a way, get our subscribers to, to fund it, scrounge up the money, although you're doing good at the bets, so we just pay for it that way. But <laughs> you went to Vegas, hey. put down some bets, and you've been doing updates on them. They're my favorite posts. Um, and, you know, at this point, we're going to make money based on our preseason predictions. You did an update on, on how we're doing. I'll actually throw us to Vivek because we, we've talked for a while. Vivek, did you check out that piece today? Yeah, I actually did read it uh, earlier today. And uh, I mean, most, most of your picks are, are things that I would have agreed with start, like starting you know, before the season. I mean, the, okay, the Trailblazers one, is, that's ridiculous. That yeah. they're doing so well. I, I, think I, the, honestly, I think I honestly had some doubts about that uh, before the season because it, it really the difference between – like the, they won 38 games last year, I think, right? Yeah. Uh, and uh, and or 39. Wait, I mean, I don't know what the exact number is. Actually, it was a little lower, wasn't it? They only won like 33. Um, but anyway, the difference between last year's Blazers team and this year's was essentially just swapping out Hickson for Lopez. And if you look at what, um, and if you look at that difference, I think there's a lot of variability in terms of how does he fit next to Aldridge and stuff, and is there really a ton of room to get the over on that one because I think if I were to you know kind of look back, I feel like maybe maybe betting the under on that number it wasn't the greatest bet. Having said that, um, you know if they'd had a line like if the under had been fifty five like it were for the Pacers, I would have been like yeah. sign me up and can I mortgage my house too, please? Uh, they, I mean they're just I mean they're this season they're having is kind of crazy um, and frankly if. If they come out with a line that says like 50 to 55 next year in Vegas, I'm going to take the under because a lot of this, a lot of it is powered by their great three point shooting. Uh, and I don't want to diminish that, but there's huge variability in that, right? If they just run yeah. a little older in that, then, you know, they could easily be back to like a 45, 50 win team next year. Yeah, I would say that the rest of your uh, your bets are, are like fairly respectable. I mean, okay, I wouldn't have picked the the Sixers to win the division, but I'm guessing the odds on that were really no. Really that good. that was that, that was, was it was five hundred one. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got. It. And you know what? Maybe they will. They just need the if the Sixers go on like you know like a seven game win streak or something like that. They're suddenly you know first in the division. I don't. So I, I actually like if I was going to put money on it now. You wanted to give me even money on a team right now. I would probably take the Celtics to win that division. Uh, yeah, exactly. but but I don't I don't actually like the Sixers' chance of winning that division at all because uh, you know number one they're they're so dependent on whether or not Michael Carter Williams is healthy and is playing and number two uh, I, I don't think that they're really going to put a lot of effort into winning it they could make they could make for example some trades that will put them in a really bad spot uh, in terms of you know really tearing off wins having said that if they don't make any trades I think it's entirely possible they could have a couple like four or five game win streaks uh, in the dog days when other teams aren't trying very hard either because they got young players and they got players trying to prove themselves and they have 
most importantly, they have a coach that is not trying to tank, and he's a pretty decent coach. So I could totally see that team, you know, getting close to 30 wins, maybe 35 wins, uh, if, like, things roll the right way for them. Having yeah. said that, that's not, you know, that's an unlikely thing. That's not a bet I would make for, you know, 10 to 1 odds. But at 500 to 1 odds, I'm more than happy to take that bet. You only did, like, 20 bucks, too, right? Like, your portfolio was 1,000. Was, was it 1,000 yeah. or 10? It's 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 twenty dollars, so it's like, you know, it's uh, it's less than one uh, percent. Yeah, it's point two percent. That's that's tax. That's sales tax. That's not well, even. You, not, what am I talking about? That's not even sales tax. That's like, sorry, I've got no metaphor for that. Sorry. <laughs> you got something to say? What were the odds on the uh, the Knicks bet? Uh, Those are like even, right? Under. All the over unders are ten to eleven, right? So. Oh, okay. One hundred and ten wins a hundred, right? So yeah. Um. I mean, that was obviously the biggest bet, and um, if it weren't for those damn Pacers, I'd be a lot happier about the portfolio because that was kind of a decent sized bet too. But um, and and actually, the Jazz have been kind of on the upswing lately. They're probably it looks like they might actually make that one a run for it. Um, the where, where my big hopes are for the Jazz is that I, I think it's going to be impossible for them to keep shooting this bad. Uh, and then the other is that eventually that home court advantage is going to kick in for them. I, I still find it unbelievable that the Jazz have a better away record than a, than a home record, given that their usual ridiculous home court advantage. Right. Well, th th I think the Jazz will beat 25 wins. I, think I can see that happening. Yeah, I, I think they are. I'm kind of like optimistic about it. But, I mean, you never know. Trey Burke goes down, then all bets are off. Because yeah. their point guard situation is just awful. I did not expect their point guards to be this awful. All yeah. right, so yeah, Brian's informed me. Um, we're almost out of time, and we do have a hard stop tonight. I actually do approve of that. We, we go back and forth about should the show just go on forever or should it just be regimented like a normal show? I like the regimented part. So yeah. I was going to say, do you do you have uh, last thoughts on your prediction, Patrick? I, as you mentioned, we haven't hit the Knicks one as hard as we could have. I mean, we've written a few posts on it, but I mean, for all the flack we get about Indiana – we get no love for just so accurately nailing the Knicks. And as soon as Tyson Chandler went down, I just laughed my head off. And, and well, but what's funny is even if you give the Knicks, let's assume Chandler had stayed healthy, and you give the win the Knicks like six more wins that they have now, right? That which, by the way, would be a ridiculous swing for just one player. Let's give them six more wins if Chandler's healthy all the time. They still look like they're in a train wreck of a position, right? Given the given that they started the season with people wanting to win the championship in New York, which we thought correctly was batshit insane. And so I, I'm mostly, I think the things I'm most proud of are the, you know, the Celtics and, and the 76ers and the way we called those two. I think I would say the Celtics are the best pick. Cause if Rondo comes back, even for like 30, 40 games, they're the, they actually are the best team in the division, in my opinion. Actually, well, the Raptors have been pretty good recently. Yeah, and, and, it's, and it's largely because, the, like what I said, it's about you know, the rebounding and the defense. They, in that trade with the Nets, they got, they got a great rebounder in Humphreys, uh, and they have some pretty decent rebounders already. Uh, sorry, they also got a great rebounder in Wallace for, for a small forward. Uh, and they got, and they got you know, pretty decent rebounding already. Uh, I think it, what it really all boils down to for the Celtics, and I'm not sure I trust Danny Ainge to do this, but what it really boils down to is they need to sell high on Jeff Green because right now, you know, that team, I think that team is very much powered by uh, Jordan Crawford and the improved play of like Salinger and Humphreys and those guys. Um, I mean, that being said, but, but Jordan Crawford could fall Jeff, off. But it's Jeff Green. So they could really sell high on Jeff Green if they wanted to, and I hope they do pull that trigger and they find a good trade for that. Yeah. So I was gonna say, yeah. Do uh, do you have want any final thoughts each, like one each, and uh, we can we can end on that, and then maybe uh, if you also want to preview anything that we might have coming up. Um. <laughs> well, I'll say that I I now pick the Heat to win the NBA Finals. I'll just stick to a safe pick. That's a that's well, that's a reasonably safe pick. So, <laughs> um, I don't really have any. Uh, Big predictions here, other than I think I've said this before. My big prediction is that in the West, Batum and Matthews both deserve to be all stars, but they're both going to be snubbed anyway. Yeah, both. Uh, we, we mentioned this, we didn't talk too much in the all star section, but the, both the Blazers and the Pacers have two really good players 
that have fueled their success and are just utterly snubbed in the All Star game. And as you said, that that sums up yeah, the All Star. The, the real the real things to look out for, you know, the fans do what the fans do, but the real things to look out for is will Stevenson be snubbed by the coaches when it comes time to name a reserve? Uh, you know, and will uh, and for that matter, probably George Hill too, uh, and and will Batum and Matthews be named uh, as reserves because they both deserve it for sure too. Aldridge I think to make, is gonna to get make a, a prediction spot. on that, I think that yeah, Stevenson Aldridge, Aldridge already gets a guaranteed reserve spot, right? Because he's not going to get voted. Yeah. So he and Love are, are going to both be given reserve spots. So who's left over? And I mean, it. I, My, you can make it. You can make an argument if they if they have close to the best record that it makes sense that they have three all stars. But I don't think they're going to get three all stars. Yeah, I think the Pacers will get George Hibbert and Stevenson. They won't get anybody else. And the Blazers, it's, it's I don't know. I think Stevenson is a question. So, sorry about that. My dog's being nice and loud, I guess, upset that the Pacers aren't getting any love. <laughs> I'll actually, my final thought, I'll, I'll apologize. We, we've managed to go a couple podcasts, and I, I'm just apathetic. The Nuggets managed to beat out my concern for them. I, I'm amazed that last season I was so angry. I guess I spent it all because I just, I can't. I'm I'm not upset that we haven't really posted a bunch about the Nuggets as of late. So that's all I've got. I do promise, or at least I'm thinking about uh, a Kevin Love post. Uh, I want to give a little bit of shout out to Ben Noah, who's been helping us out. There is uh, some potential coaching data on uh, coaches and race that uh, I'm looking forward to get something out rec- uh, in the near future. And Patrick, you had mentioned one other article idea you had coming up. What was that again? I have a really unique greatest of all time article idea, but I'm not going to tell you very much about it. It's still in the works. Oh, I like that. Uh, and I think we've got, I think Arturo actually has another greatest of all time in the queue as well. So plenty, both historical and, and upcoming coming up. And hopefully, Vivek, you won't be a stranger. Yeah, yeah, I was busy this semester, but that was yeah. unfortunate. Congratulations on, on getting into college. Congratulations. Hopefully, Thanks. you did well. Did you do well this semester? Yeah, I would say I did pretty well. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, we, we've hit our time. Thanks so much, both of you, for being here. And uh, yeah. Patrick, we'll let you go. All right. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks.